Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. No, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> All right, and as we have done every year for the past several years now, we're actually going to go with the Daily Dose of Stupid Award. So this is kind of a year in review thing where we go back over all the stupidest stories we saw all throughout the year, and we've come together, voted on them, sorted out a list that will uh, hopefully entertain you, and these are the ones that we think are the dumbest. So we're going to go ahead and start out with the top 10, so let's go ahead and get to it. The Tactics Top 10. All right, so the way that this list works is we're going to go ahead and run through the top 10, and we'll go ahead and give you an honorable mention. Each one of us have selected a story that didn't make the list that we'll be talking about uh, before we get to number one. Uh, but for now, we're just going to start off with number 10. Number 10. Okay, and number 10 on the list this year... Uh, you guys know Representative Lauren Boebert, mm -hmm. you know, campaigned as a conservative, family values, loves God, uh, puts her faith first and puts her family values first and is all about her family. Well, until she got caught groping a man's crotch, a guy who, by the way, is not her husband, uh, at a public event and uh, got kicked out of the performance for it. So, yeah, family values. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. on any level. That's just tacky, even if you are married, but especially if you're not. But especially yeah, especially if you're trying to perform like family values. That too, yeah. This in any, I mean, you don't do that if you're at a bar. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Right, but, right. But well, especially, so, and that's the thing too. Like, I don't know. I, I think the GOP has just gotten to the point to where, and I'm. I know that the low-hanging fruit here is to talk about Trump, but I, I do think that there's some legitimacy to this. The idea that because of what happened with Trump and the way that Republican voters no longer seem to be super concerned about the moral issues and, and appearing as though you're a very moral person, I think that that's kind of what happened here, is that representatives feel much more at ease about not really worrying too much about their image on stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think they just they they just have to throw it out. It's kind of like how in Alabama all they have to do is like tote a gun and say, "I love God and I like guns," and you get elected. It's yeah. kind of the same thing there. I mean, you're not wrong on that, but I it, it's a shame to see it because you know there was so much to be said. This is one of the things that I was warning about, um, and again, it it doesn't all revolve around Trump, but that was to me a, a big flashpoint in that is that. Ultimately, when you're going through something like that, you don't cede the moral high ground to your opponent because it's something that's not exactly easy to take back. Yep. And Lauren Boebert just doing this and just sort of blatantly, you know, in front of God and everybody else, um, just completely ignoring the fact that you're in a public place. And I mean, to me, it's it's a lack of respect for your husband on top of all that as well. But uh, just if you're going to market yourself that way, this is not the way you conduct yourself, ultimately. I mean, you're in public, dude. What do you think? You think you're going to get caught? Grow up in a man. Come on. No, I mean, you're, you're right on that, too. If nothing else, just from the, uh, the uh, public, you know, interest there should be something that you would be worried about. But anyway... Um, let's go on and jump to number nine. Number nine. Number nine on this one. Uh, sweetheart deal with Hunter Biden and the way that that whole thing fell through. Even though they got somebody who they considered a very favorable judge and they kind of felt like they had it in the bag. You don't make a plea deal that gives someone blanket immunity for that and any other possible crimes that might be presented in the future. And when the judge saw that was like, uh, no. 
Like even, even a Democrat appointed judge looked at that and was like, yeah, we can't just give people immunity for future crimes based on getting immunity for a current crime. That's not a thing that you can do. And the fact that it blew up in their face, to me, demonstrates how confident they are in the fact that they're never going to be held accountable for any of their actions. Oh, yeah. I think what's ridiculous is that number one, America thought that that was going to be a thing. <laughs> number two, that they thought they could do it. But my goodness, when, it, when have you ever seen a plea deal that gives you immunity from anything, in the, from ever getting prosecuted for other things, too? Like, no. Well, and what's funny is it very much revealed their hand because when the judge asked that question, Hunter Biden's legal team essentially asked, uh, well, no, that's not what, what that means at all. And Hunter Biden goes, uh, yes, it does. In fact, if we don't, if that's not the deal, then I don't want to be a part of it. Like they blew up their own plea deal. And I mean, Laura, you're an attorney, so you can speak to this probably quite a bit. The whole legal system is predicated on an adversarial system. Yep. Like even John Adams is defending redcoats in order to make sure that they had legal representation even though he didn't like the red coats and didn't want them there, he still felt that the law demanded that they have some form of representation to defend their rights. Oh yeah, we've come a long way in our our country when it comes to that because now we're basically saying, well, the uh, the people making the plea deal, the prosecutors and the legal team are on the same side. Like that's absurd. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's I don't know. I think it's my lawyer's stamp of stupid. Because yeah, I just. That's not how any of this works, guys. I mean, we make plea deals all the time. We, sure. we do. But usually it's, you get a pretty hefty penalty to waive a, you know, a crime. Right. This is like, you get a minor penalty to waive this crime and a whole bunch of other really heavy crimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing just, it didn't work and it, it never was going to. Um, but, you know. The fact that it blew up does show that there's, I don't know, maybe at least a, a tiny little bit of legitimacy. Uh, but anyway, we'll go ahead and, and move on to the next one. Let's go ahead and move on to number eight. Number eight. Okay, and number eight. The White House trying to make Bidenomics a thing. This was one that was actually very high on my list. So I got this one a lot of points i'm kind of surprised it's that far down and, and here's my rationale every single time people associate a politician's name with a thing it's almost always a pejorative so for example when obamacare came out people forget that the democrats didn't call it obamacare republicans called it obamacare because they knew it was going to be a disaster and wanted to connect obama's name to the policy they constantly refer to it and still to this day call it the Affordable Care Act. Yes. Which is hilarious because it's literally the opposite of that. It actually wound up costing people over $2,000 a year for a family of four. But anyway, um, that's always what was associated with it. What to me is crazy is the Bidenomics things is they, they actually associated Biden's name with the economy, which they knew was crap when they came up with the name. <laughs> yeah, but they're oh, good yeah. at hiding it. And and they're gaslighting. They're good at gaslighting. Yeah. Well, uh, they're good at confidently stating that it's good, but they're not good at hiding it. Like uh, it, the latest public opinion poll, Biden's by far his least popular thing was the economy. Wasn't even close. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, they can go. To the, people go to the grocery store. Liberal, right? Uh, conservative, whatever. All you gotta do is go to the grocery store. Uh, Go out to eat, mm. uh, buy other products, right. buy clothes, you know, and all of those things. And because of transportation costs, that affects everything. Mm -hmm. And and all of that, and that's come down some, but and there's some reasons why that's come down. And that's a little scary, to be honest, when you take out of our reserve, which flooded the market and made it go down. All of those things uh, can't be good and it can't be sustained either. Well, and to, uh, to your point, Dad, talking about reality kind of slapping them in the face, this is one of the reasons that I view this one as one of the stupidest stories of the year is because there's a lot of things that because the, the Democrats have a stranglehold on the media and are able to set narratives, they can do a pretty good job of gaslighting a lot of people. For example, this is just one example I'll pull out of nowhere, the border. Oh, yeah. 
unless you're in a border state, it's pretty easy to make people believe it's not that big a deal right. because it's not something that's right in front of them all the time. Right. Uh, if it's something like the what's going on in Israel, like big story, but because it's not something happening right in front of their face and because they have a stranglehold on the media, they control what you see on that. They can kind of just throw that one under the rug and, and make sure that the people that they want to vote for them, the normies that aren't really paying attention to politics, they don't really see those things. You can't just look at a person straight in the face and tell them that their $200 a week grocery bill that's now $350 is not real. Like, that just doesn't work. And that's why I'm so astounded by that they voluntarily chose to associate Biden's name with it. Now, Barack Obama, for all his foibles, he was a lot smarter on the economy. Because you remember what he did was he said, well, yes, the economy's bad and my policies are making it better. But it was really George Bush's policies right, he that caused it on all that. Bush. Right. For, for by the way, let me pause. Just did go you, ahead. Did you notice the numbers he gave? It went from two hundred and fifty. To two hundred or three fifty. Right. Well, two hundred is still unheard of. Uh, me. Well, like, yeah. Well, it is, but but you can tell he's single. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because three hundred fifty dollars a month may feed one person like him. It won't feed a family. Oh, he said a week. Oh, he said a week. Yeah, two hundred dollars okay. a week. Oh, okay. That's you, the, that's that's more in line. I thought. I'm sorry, yeah. I misheard it. That's I that's the average grocery bill for a family. Of okay, four so for you a week. do have your numbers right. Okay, okay. I, I did my correctly. research, Dad. Okay, you did. <laughs> that's well, pretty on par. Well, I just know that's that in, in a family, it's a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Right, easily, easily. Oh, easily. Uh, yeah. It's over that. Do you know that uh, one of the things that's really crazy is because of inflation for the first time, and I think. 30 or 40 years, Americans are now spending a larger percentage of their income on food than they ever have. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Which is, that's, that's absolutely true. Even when the economy like, was bad in the Obama era, it never reached that point. No. Have you seen savings is like way, way, way down and uh, credit, racking up credit is sky high right now? Well, honestly, I'm not saving anymore either because why would I? If you I can. save, it, right, if, if I save money and then that money is no longer valued anymore, then I didn't save any money. And so yeah. that's why I've moved to things like Bitcoin and investing things in, in things that aren't dollars because saving in dollars doesn't make any sense. Well, it's just not room in most families' budgets now to even save. That's um, also true. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, why would you want to coin something that's clearly not your strong suit in your, <laughs> in your, uh, your campaign at all, like? I mean, that would be downplaying your pythonics. That that would be like, uh, um, you know, Bill Clinton, uh, marital fidelity, you know, <laughs> or Donald Trump says nice things. Like, yeah, what just, a nice guy. <laughs> right. These are not your strong points, guys. Um, but it, yeah, the whole thing is just silly that they've tried to make this into a, a selling point for Joe Biden. All right, let's move on to number seven. Number seven. Now, this one, I think, will go down in history as one of the dumbest marketing ideas in American history. Like, it's it's right up there with New Coke, in my opinion. Hiring Dylan Mulvaney as the spokesperson for your beer is one of the most idiotic financial decisions any business has ever made. Oh, 100%. I'm sorry, but most women are not big beer drinkers. Right. They're just not. Um I guess if you were to be a beer drinker, Bud Light might be your thing because I've heard that it's kind of a weak beer. I don't know. I've never I, had I, Bud Light. I genuinely don't know. I'm not a beer drinker myself, yeah. um, so I don't know. But anyway, if you're going to market to mostly men, which is what beer commercials market towards, you're not going to use a man to turn woman. You're just not. It's stupid. I don't think Bud Light's recovered from that. They still haven't financially, if you look at the numbers and you're looking at how they're selling. So here's the thing that happened with Bud Light. <clears throat> there are certain brands, and I've maintained this for a very long time. I remember a ton of conservatives were saying to me when the whole Colin Kaepernick Nike thing came out, they're like, oh, this is the end of Nike. This is going to destroy them. I was like, no, you have to know your audience. That's true in media. It's true when you're producing something. There are certain brands that can totally get away with being woke. Uh, if you're Starbucks, your average person that you're marketing towards is a middle to upper class white suburban woman. So yeah, totally cool with being on board with the woke stuff. 
you, you can do that. It'll be fine. It won't hurt your brand at all. Same thing with Target. That's their main core audience, so they can get away with, although even they've taken a little bit of a hit with the transing thing. Uh, but my point is, a lot of these brands, they can get away with that because their clientele are people that tend to agree with those talking points. Walmart, NASCAR, Bud Light, they can't get away with junk like that. <laughs> they just can't do it. No. And they have not. No, they haven't. Um, Bud Light has has taken it directly on the chin. They went from being America's number one beer. I mean, like easily. They weren't there wasn't even really a close second. I think Miller was was nipping on its heels, but they've still not financially recovered from that. And just the idea that you're going to take the a product that is primarily consumed by middle America, working class people, and you're going to Put, make the the face of transgenderism your spokesperson for that like there's not a single marketing person on planet earth that would have thought that was a good idea if they weren't blinded by ideology yeah i've never seen businesses I, i'm sorry hon. you're good go ahead. Uh, sabotage their own business right purposefully yeah it, see you, you would think even, like you'll go places now and they don't even sell but light anymore because mm -hmm. they're not gonna make a profit well, well i don't even pay attention to that i guess i mean i i the media story, yes, but I mean, in the store, I don't. I don't. You want to look? It's fun. They go to a, a, a ballpark, Montgomery's Biscuits. They don't yeah. sell Bud Light anymore because they can't make money off of it. Yeah, and it's not that Montgomery isn't woke because it is, but you know. Well, they, you can't get it there. You're you're correct that Montgomery is woke, but the Montgomery Biscuits are not. Oh yeah, because you, you go inside the stadium, it's a completely different crowd than the people outside the stadium. It's a bunch of rednecks from Wetumpka and Millbrook, and <laughs> that's that's a sweet spot, right? For for minor league baseball, for sure, it is. Yeah. And I'm not saying that there aren't Families. like city people that like it too, because there are people like that that go to the biscuits. But uh, in fact, I don't know if you notice, Laura, but if you look over your left shoulder, that's actually a biscuit stocking right there. Well done. <laughs> so, well done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so. But yeah, you're right that ultimately there was just a stigma created. And if there's one thing you don't want, like if you know that your brand is frequented by people like that, you don't put a totem of the opposite of everything they believe. Like, for example, um, if you were Starbucks, I don't think them putting out a nativity scene in front of their their coffee shop would be a smart idea because that's not who they're marketing to. Yeah just the way that it is so that's the main thing the main takeaway from this one guys know your audience all right let's go on to number six number six all right number six and this is a big win especially for those of us that are paying attention to the media quite a bit fox news firing tucker carlson speaking of knowing your audience that's 100 percent. yeah that that was one that dad had ranked i think you had that ranked number one actually, oh i did dad. i had that uh, well, do you want to take that one then? Well, the reason that I say that is because, and back to the sabotaging your own business, you take your number one guy, you know that people are more passionate about him than any other person that you have on the air, and that people talk about him, he's a water cooler guy, that people are talking about at work because of what he said in, in his show, and then you get rid of him for an inexplicable reason, really, from what I remember. Uh, maybe y'all could help me with that. But uh, there was just a backlash of that that they haven't recovered from. Oh, no. And here's the thing. Fox News, if you were to go back in time to like the, I would say, early 2000s, late 90s, that era of Fox News, they could probably fire Bill O'Reilly and still be okay. Because Bill O'Reilly was the flagship of this, but but the thing is that would have that would have really hurt them to fire Bill O'Reilly. But they were such a powerful force, and they were really the only name in right wing media at the time. They could probably have still survived and gotten away with it and done just fine, even without Bill O'Reilly. You can't do that in an era where cable is going extinct. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like. Now you've got competition like the Daily Wire, Newsweek, you know. The Blaze, Ladder with Crowder, yeah. um, uh, even Drudge is doing some stuff now. So, yeah, not only do they have competition, but on top of that, like, just cable in general is a dying breed. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember back when, you know, Bill O'Reilly, and I'm just using him because he was kind of in Tucker Carl's uh, 
Tucker Carlson's position before right. Tucker was. I love this show. Right. I mean, you know, kind of kind of catered to people above our age demographic, but still a great show. I'm an old woman. <laughs> well, at heart, I am too, an old Hispanic woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, back then, I think O'Reilly was pulling down like 25, 30, 40 million a night. Like, Tucker Carlson, even though he was by far the most successful news commentator on any cable news network, he was still doing good to pull down 20. Yeah. And so, honestly, the fact that he's now launched his own network, he's probably going to be better off than he was even back at Fox. Well, he may be. And, you know, as far as Tucker, and I liked him, and sometimes he was edgy, and sometimes I didn't like what he said, just like a lot of other people. But he made The biggest thing about him is he made people think. Oh, yeah. And because of what he said, the dialogue that he had was interesting. Uh, even if I didn't like it, I thought it was he was a fascinating guy to listen to. Mm-hmm. He had a different style. Sometimes it was annoying. He wasn't. But but you don't get rid of that guy. Uh, in that situation, you stick to your guns because people aren't sticking to their guns on what they know is right for their own business. Well, Dad. And, and I don't understand that. Do you know? Who the and and I love the point that you brought up there. He made people think. That's the thing Fox didn't like about him. They don't want you to think. They want you to sit there and listen to their talking points and then go vote GOP to save America. That's that is their marketing model. Yeah, have you noticed basically all their shows are the same? Oh yeah, like all of them. They all hit the same points. If you go to Daily Wire and listen to each of their hosts, they're, none of their shows are the same. Oh, uh, uh, Candace, uh, Candace same Owens comments. and Ben Shapiro were uh, in a very public feud right now. Actually. Yeah, and so uh, it's like, but like Fox News. If I turn on one show, it's gonna be the same thing in the next one. Oh yeah, I have no idea. You know why? You don't watch it. I don't watch it anymore. Whoa! I don't. You must be a happier man. Well, actually, I am because look, since the election, yeah. <laughs> Laura, I'll be honest. You get to the point when you see what we saw, you do get disgruntled. And it's not that I'm not engaged, don't love my country, and don't worry about him, because I do. But me watching it at night doesn't do any good because I don't know where our votes are going anyway. No, that's fair. That's fair. And I, Has Fox News recovered its viewerships? Nope, not no. even close. No, wow. not close. Now, that part I do know, just from hearing you talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, see, the thing is, and, and this is, I'm not trying to brag or say that I'm so in the know or whatever, but as somebody who is in the media, I know how to read ratings. I know how to like look at the different demographics and see where they are. I don't know that Fox News will ever recover from this. Probably not. And, and part of it may just be that cable is going extinct, but part of it is like, that, that was kind of my point at the beginning of this. If you're on a ship that you already know is sinking, you don't start po- poking holes in the hull. Like that's just not a smart thing to do. Maybe Fox could have survived a little longer with Tucker, but without him, I just don't think they ever financially. They're recovered. still better than MSNBC, though, because, son, you and I could do a singing and nope. dancing show. MSNBC can't do better than them. <laughs> nope, Dad. Uh, MSNBC beat Fox in the last ratings demographic. Really? Wow. Yes. That hasn't been the case. Shit, show you how out of touch I am. 32 years, I think, Fox beat uh, MSNBC in the ratings, and for the first time in 32 years, MSNBC beat Fox. My goodness. That's, that's, that's how you bad know it is. You, mess up when that you know, that's when you're like, losing to Rachel Maddow. <laughs> you know, that's like changing. Uh, you're going to have a new model instead of the F-150 truck. You've been number one, and I'm not a Ford person. You've been number one for 47 years, and you say, hey, let's change this thing and sabotage it. And <laughs> That's stupid. That is stupid. Well, that's the thing. It would be like Coke coming out and say, you know what? We're just not going to make Coke anymore. Yeah. Now, could they, that one time. could they could they could they survive on Sprite and Fanta? I don't know, maybe, but the point is why would you torpedo the number one selling uh soft drink in America? It's just not smart. I don't think they ever came out with a reason either for the Tucker Carlson firing. Did they? Did they? I never did officially know. Officially so. see what it was. I I, I I saw it was speculated by Tucker Carlson. I I think based on things I've read by Tucker Carlson and also people that used to work at Fox that it was because he started talking about God a lot more than he used to. Hmm. And uh, um, well, Ansley, what's her name on the the morning show? She talks about God. Not I don't know that the the but the yeah, she wrote a whole book about it. it yeah, uh, it makes blonde Rupert, head lady. She's a pretty lady. She, she's good. Well, I mean, they're all good looking on Fox. Um, yeah, I never noticed. Now, now that uh, noticed. Gretchen's not there anymore. <laughs> um, but anyway, 
uh, Rupert Murdoch is very uncomfortable with people talking about God, especially as it pertains to current events. And because of that, I think Tucker being the flagship and the face of the network, that just bothered him. Uh, I think that there were other things too. I don't think it was exclusively that, but um, I just, I, based on some things that I heard about what was going on behind the scenes, I think that that was the thing that was it more than anything else. Because he, he also... Um, broke up with his then fiance because she believed that Tucker was a prophet sent from God. I don't believe that. But, oh, I don't know, silly. but my point is, like, that kind of stuff makes Rupert Murdoch extremely uncomfortable. That's weird. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's go ahead and move on to number five. Number five. There okay, we go. and number five on the list is Jabal. Uh, J- Jabal. <laughs> Jamal Jabal. Bowman. I tried to say it too quickly. Pulling the fire alarm to stop the vote. Now, this is a stupid story, even if we didn't have more details that came out as the weeks went on. Have you guys actually seen the video of him pulling it? I yeah. I haven't. So yeah. the best thing about it is, once we got the security video of that, you can actually see him removing the signs that say, don't uh, open this door, fire oh, really? alarm will sound. Yeah, and he's like, and he's over here later. He's like, "Well, I didn't know, you know, <laughs> didn't know? the door." Yeah, and it's like, really, we saw you remove the signs. <laughs> You're in the Capitol building. Yeah. They've got cameras, dude. <laughs> we know. Well, you know, it's automatic in school. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, I mean, they actually will discipline you for. Well, because they will expel you. Well, here's the that. thing that you may not know, Dad. In the District of Columbia, <laughs> because of the fire codes in there. You can be arrested for fa- like knowingly pulling a fire alarm when there is no fire. That's actually a oh, legal, I don't doubt that. Like, that's a misdemeanor. That does. Yeah, he did not. Actually, I get that being against the law. I, I agree. You know, uh, because that's a dangerous thing that can happen. Oh yeah. Because if you do that, if you're an arsonist, you can set a fire somewhere else. And, right and take everybody what you know what i mean sure you can simultaneously do that it's a dangerous thing to do well and you know? another thing on top of that too uh he was interrupting an official proceeding because right. that was an actual vote i tend to remember people getting 22 years in prison for doing that on january 6th they Not did january do that january 6th the beast of the insurrection yeah the that that was the poorest insurrection I've ever seen. <laughs> it's it was the first insurrection in history where everyone simultaneously forgot to bring weapons. Yeah, <laughs> if you're gonna at least bring a, a good stick, right? <laughs> a, at least once. Oh, spear, they at least had the bullhorns. A spear. They did have the horns. We'll have I guess you could hit somebody with a horn. Buffalo horn. Yeah, but anyway, no. The <laughs> one of my favorite. Uh, memes that I saw after that was the, uh, since you were talking about the office earlier, Laura, it's the one where they have the two pictures and one of them's a door handle and the other one's a fire alarm and it's Pam underneath going, they're the same picture. <laughs> yep. Doesn't understand how those work. So here's the thing, and, and this is another reason why I think that this one is stupid. What they should have done is not have Jabal Bo- Jamal Bowen do it. They should have had AOC doing it because everyone would have believed she was too stupid to not know yeah, the difference between the door handle and the fire alarm. At least there she's a woman. <laughs> and and the thing about AOC is, I mean, what else could she do that would hurt her reputation? Exactly. With reasonable Sorry. people. Right, Jabal. So, I mean, it wouldn't matter. Bowman's actually in kind of a purplish district. Like, oh, yeah. AOC could literally be on video murdering children and they wouldn't vote her out. No. Yeah, so. you know, when you study political science in college, um, you know, they talk about different procedures that you can go through uh, within passing legislation and voting on stuff. They're now going to add that to the list of things you could do to stop a vote. Yeah. Pull the fire alarm. I mean, yeah, that's a thing you can do, apparently, and it worked, and there have been no repercussions, not kicked out of Congress, not even censured. Yeah. So. Yeah, they. No, I think they did. I think they censured him. Well, I thought they voted on the censure, but it didn't pass. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I think it did. I oh. can't remember. Well, the Republicans have, what, a three-vote majority a now? Then. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm a grown man, though, that did this. Well, to yeah. be honest, the fact that none of us know shows you about how important a censure is. Yeah, yeah. It's basically, just a, its, it's basically just a congressional finger waggle. That's about the extent of the seriousness of it. It was more serious until Donald Trump, honestly. Well, maybe. 
Oh, I also remember the the Democrats failing to censure um, Ilhan Omar about saying blatantly anti-Semitic things. So oh, yeah. That was fun. Anyway. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to number four. Number four. All right. And number four, the federal government just issued an end of the state of emergency over COVID-19 on January 31st, 2023. So a lot of people didn't realize this because, you know, it didn't affect most of our lives and most of our states had reopened since then. But the federal emergency did not end until this year, which is just absurd. There's no excuse for that. You see, stupidest story. When I, I saw that one, I didn't know whether to put it first or last. Because I'm thinking, as far as impact, uh, because of when it was, it right. really didn't impact anybody much, did it? That's not really, well, no. Arguably, That's what I it meant. made the economy worse. Well, timing wise, because a lot of the federal help that came from the emergency mm -hmm. uh, order it ended because of it, and so an economy that was already bad, it made it even worse. That's okay, true. Well, I didn't. I didn't. It, know, it also in, the only people that it impacted in a very personal way though were federal employees because I have some friends that work for the Fed. And they were still wearing masks until then in some, yeah. some situations. Of course, here in Montgomery, we still have that too. <laughs> what I think is funny is uh, obviously it's a little different now. Mm -hmm. I'll see panhandlers uh, in like 80, 90 degree weather in the middle of summer with a mask on. I'm like, yeah, I'm not giving you anything. You're too dumb to <laughs> like you natural, se your natural selection problem. should show up at some point. Buddy, your biggest problem is not the virus. Right? <laughs> you got a lot, of, a lot of issues that are worse than that. You can't afford a sandwich, but you can't afford a <laughs> face mask. All right, then. Yeah, yeah, I saw some people walking around outside with face masks. Oh, I saw a face mask today. It's ridiculous. I, I did. And that's to each his own. I don't care if they wear, a, you know, a a barrel over the head, but it doesn't like, bother why? me, but it's just, yeah. But it does show you how absurd the emergency orders were, and they were that way yeah. for the states, too. Now, they ended a lot earlier for the states. But, I mean, Alabama was one of the last ones to rescind their orders. I don't know if you remember that, but Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, all of our surrounding states have lifted theirs almost a full year before Alabama did. Because we have K. Ivy. Yay. Yeah, see, that... John had the appropriate reaction to Kay Ivy's name. How do you feel, John? <laughs> Tell us about it. All right. On that note, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Number three. All right. Now, number three is pretty bad. Uh, Gavin Newsom agreeing to debate Ron DeSantis on national TV. There are some fights you should just know that you're overmatched and should not engage in. And I would have had this one slightly higher if it had been anywhere other than Fox. I didn't have it as my number one because I knew, because it's on Fox, Gavin Newsom can throw his hands up and say, ah, it was a Fox debate with Sean Hannity. It was biased. But even with that, I think that ended Gavin Newsom's uh, career, at least on the national level. Like, he'll still probably get elected in California, but uh -huh. I don't think anybody could watch DeSantis just continuously take him down every single question and think that he has any viability on the national stage anymore. You gotta have guts to lie when they've got the statistics right on the screen. Like, you gotta have guts. I mean, he <laughs> did. I was that was impressive, honestly. I mean, all I saw was clips of it, but uh, Gavin was overmatched. It, I mean, it would be like me in the prime taking on Chuck Norris in a fist fight. <laughs> Or, or somebody else you could name that your prime or Chuck's prime. It wouldn't matter. Okay. <laughs> it wouldn't Chuck matter because I'm thirty. But, but, I'm thirty four in a in a first degree black belt, and I still think Chuck Norris could whip me, even though he's old and fat now. Yeah, but it's just a. Uh, and I don't know. I guess he's such an attention hog. Is that what? Why Gavin did that? Was I think the attention? So, so here's what I, mean, I think. We all know thinking, why he did it. Though. Here's what I think why? it was, and I think DeSantis actually talked about it in the debate is that he wants to be the nominee oh yeah i think you know i think if biden and trump somehow drop out for whatever reason realistically or die you a, know they, or could die. Be, neither one of them are spring chickens yeah then you are looking at a matchup between newsom and desantis and Who, who's smarter biden or newsom 
<laughs> I mean, you know, back in really their hard. prime, like, at least has like now. You know, I think a it's medical excuse. Yeah, well, I was, I was going to say if we're talking now, I think it's clearly Newsom. But if we're talking about like you know 1980s Joe Biden, I think he'd give him a run for his money. I don't know. Even well, okay, I'll give him this. He doesn't fumble his words, but like right, he's an eloquent speaker. He just what he's saying doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, but yes. most of his people wouldn't pick up on that anyway. Oh, I know. That's why I'm. That's yeah, why I think that true. he's the better candidate. They don't care about the the numbers. Yeah. But see, that's uh, the thing that's so funny is, Dad, you were my debate coach back in the day, and so you know a lot about this just like I do. What is the easiest way to win any argument? Say I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> what you gotta say? I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> <laughs> Laura did not have a classic debate. No, <laughs> but well. Obviously, you have a, a pointed argument with facts behind it sure. that refutes what your opponent is saying. Right. That's that's all it is. And it helps if you have the truth on your side as well. Yeah, well, it has to be truthful facts. That you, that's what a fact is. Right. And I know and, that's, that's what you were saying, but I was making right. it, you know, a little uh, more explicit. It's, uh. it's a, and it's a shame that you know, I see the rhetoric going back and forth between people now, and whether you liked them or not, but when Kennedy debated, because I've seen, and I was not able to see that at that time, but Kennedy and Nixon, sure, they debated facts. Yeah. They did. Uh, you know, Nixon and McGovern, uh, you go way back into the 70s and then get into the 80s between uh, Mondale and Reagan. Uh, that was, everyone watch a good debate, a presidential debate. That's a good debate. Uh, oh, that's you, good. It, it, you can get through, a, and they debated actual issues and facts and things like that, and had substantial. But that that's no longer much of a thing from the other side at all. Well, and that's the thing that I think is is a real difference now than it was back then, is that at the time there there's always been spin. They sure. would always like cherry pick statistics. Like that's always been a thing. And I understand yes. that. But like during the debate with Newsom and DeSantis, I couldn't find any of the sources for Gavin. And normally he didn't even give statistics or facts. He would just say, he would just call DeSantis a racist or something. Like that's not a debate. Yeah. yeah. But, or he would just directly contradict the facts that were just right there. Right. That's what killed me. I mean, like, well, more people, that, like, do you not see that? <laughs> It's right there, do you? It's like, we've made life so for Californians everything. better. It's like, but there's more homeless people and they're all leaving your state. <laughs> like, there's not... <laughs> okay, top no, top thing from that whole debate was uh, DeSantis pulling out the crap map. Oh, the, the poop map? Yeah, yeah, the crap map. It was great. It was truly that, that was that was That was pretty, pretty awful. Um, I mean, there's... There might be other ways to dispute certain points, and... But if you have a city that's covered in human feces, there's not a good counter debate for that. Like, I really can't come up with a way to counter that one. See, John gets it. John's like, I contributed to it. <laughs> well, luckily, he doesn't live in San Francisco. That's true. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number two. Number two. Okay, and number two on our list. And, you know, for people who might accuse us of being biased. Number two is actually a Republican. Donald Trump saying that the six-week abortion ban in Florida was a terrible thing. DeSantis is willing to sign a five-week and six-week ban. Would you support that? You think I, that I think what he far? did is a terrible thing and a terrible mistake. Now, a lot of the ones that we've given on this top ten list so far have been a know-your-audience moment. This is one where Donald Trump, for whatever reason, clearly does not understand his audience. And I think what's going on here is... A, Trump only understands destroy the enemy. And so because of that, when DeSantis does anything, he has to say it's bad regardless of whether he actually agrees with it or not. I think that's part of it. But I think another part of it could also be that when you come to an issue like this, based on the way that he's been talking about the abortion issue lately, I think some advisor has gotten into his head and been feeding him information that tells him that the reason that they got that we got shellacked in the last midterm election is because of the abortion issue. Now, I don't think that that's true, and I also don't think it's politically feasible, and I'll tell you why here real quick. There are, most of Americans are not where the three of us are. No. 
all three of us are no. extremely pro-life, like yes. to the point of uh, basically anything that isn't life of the mother, no exceptions, abortion is always made illegal. I right. go farther. As a mom, if your life is in danger, yeah, you is, die. Yeah, I'll tell you, you just you do. Right, and and we can argue I that would. point, but but you know what I'm saying? Like, I've we're, known women like that. We're very much, and I agree with you on the moral level. I think that there's a legal argument to be made in the other direction, but morally, I'm I'm 100 percent with you. But my my point in all of what I'm saying is, we're way over here on this side of the spectrum, and then. There are also people way over here on the other side of the spectrum that are like, uh, we don't care if it's like a month old. It, if you want to kill it, you can kill it. Um, I mean, the former governor of, of Virginia, for example, people like that. A month old, that's big size my John John. <laughs> but the fact is like 60% of the population is somewhere between those two. And the truth is none of those people vote on abortion. Like, if you look at the data, if you look at the demographics, they vote on a lot of things. Abortion is not one of them. And so the only people who will change who they're voting for based on abortion are people that are not in that middle of the ground kind of thing. So it makes no sense to pander on this issue, whether you're pro or anti-abortion. Well, and Dobbs didn't happen yet. Dobbs hadn't happened. And no, Dobbs had really happened at that saw. point. Uh, not 2020. Oh, oh, you're talking about the election. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. you were talking about when Trump made this comment. Yeah, so, I mean, no reasonable person would think they lost the election because of the if the abortion issue because nobody voted in 2020 based off of the abortion issue. No. Not really. No, I, I don't think so either. I was talking about, though, the midterm, 2022. Oh, yeah. Where I think that the reason people didn't see the red wave they were expecting, I think that Trump has advisors that are telling him that's because people push so hard on the anti-abortion issue. But here's the thing that's ironic about that, if that's – where his head is and where he's getting that advice. Here's where the critical thinking comes in. The very six, the six week abortion ban that Trump was commenting on is a place where the red wave absolutely happened. Yeah. I mean, governor DeSantis won freaking Miami Dade County. Unheard of. It is unheard of. That's the bluest area <laughs> in the state. And so the fact that he was able to pull that off should be a pretty good indication that there are a lot of reasons that 2022 may have been kind of a wash for Republicans. Abortion was not one of those issues. So, you see, I think he can win. I agree. The primary or the general? No, the general election. He's the only one that I, I think that's given an indication they want to run. He's the only one I think that can win. I, I agree know, with that wholeheartedly. Two weeks ago, I would have disagreed with you, but given the new polling, I gotta say it's probably true. Well, see, here's the reason I don't think Trump can win. <clears throat> and I know that this is not really the topic that we were discussing, but here's why I don't think Trump can win. Oh, we're talking about DeSantis or, or Trump that could win? No, I'm talking about in the general election, this is why I think Donald Trump cannot get elected president again. I think that there are enough blue states that after his prosecution will declare that he cannot be on the ballot that he will lose because of that. Yeah, because I, I think be wrong, I think DeSantis but, can win. Yeah. I agree with that. That's what I wholeheartedly. I, yeah, I've not never Trump. questioned that. Uh, Trump, I have yeah, DeSantis, that I think, is the all. only candidate. And I'll tell you that why. That, 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 that yeah, would be unusual for you, but I think he's the closest thing to Reagan that I've seen. I agree. And and the and people look progressive. People liked Reagan, mm -hmm. and people in his own state like DeSantis. Oh, even they the blue, do. Yeah. yeah, even the blue people, they mm -hmm. like him. There's enough of them. Now, some people hate everybody that's, but uh, reasonable people. Right. There Anyone will be a right lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. The, anybody reasonable, they did it. And, and Reagan won in a landslide. Uh -huh. We had more reasonable people back then than we do now. I, I'll give you that. But I really do believe that he is the only one that has the, the chance of doing that. I agree. I think he's I, honestly. I think if Trump would step aside, that's how we would win the election: is get Santos going. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Well, and I, I hate to say it, the latest polls. I hate to say it, but I don't think the polls are going to matter because I think what's going to happen is Trump is going to get prosecuted, and the Republican Party will either have to back him from prison or let whoever came in second in the primary run. I, I think that that's the only options they've got at this point. But. That's that's just conjecture. That's just my opinion. Uh -huh. uh, let's go ahead and move on to our honorable mentions. Honorable mention. 
Okay, so we've all selected one of the stories that were uh, of the year that did not make the top 10 list that we wanted to share here. So um, we'll go ahead and let Laura go first if you'd like to. What was your honorable mention this year, Laura? Okay, so for me, it was Secret Service claims there's no leads on the who put cocaine in the White House. <laughs> it was Hunter Biden. Here's a clue for you. It was Hunter Biden. Dude's the cokehead. I mean, this thing, it's, it's planted in the, like, in the Oval Office, where only a few people have access, right? Hunter Biden was there. When I was, I understand it, it was a library, not the Oval Office, but the library was only accessible to like a very small select group of people, which included the first family. Yeah, and I'm not saying that it's likely that Hunter Biden went in there, given that you'd have to be interested in books. And I'm not sure he is. Well, I think that's where but. he's hiding his cocaine in the books. <laughs> the that's books. that's why it was there. And now we know why the smell of books is so addicting. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. You it was Hunter. You bibliophile. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What in the world? You don't have any leads. Are you kidding me? Well, there's no leads. There's no suspects. We, we can't think of who could possibly be uh, putting cocaine in the White House. We have no idea who that could be. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Don't worry, guys. The Secret Service is on top of it. Yeah. Great. Great security we got. All right, Dad. What was yours? Uh, Biden shooting down party balloons after Chinese balloon scare. <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember that one? Oh, I do. Like, at first, he let the actual Chinese spy balloon fly over the entire continental United States and didn't do a thing about it. And then he's shooting down uh, birthday balloons from Publix afterward to make up for it. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you know, if you did that in a sit sitcom ahead of time, they would say, well, that's the silliest thing. It, but then it really would right. happen. Uh, I think it was Mark Twain that said the difference in fiction and reality is that fiction actually has to make sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's such a Biden kind of thing to do. Very Babylon and, kind of article. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always wondered about this. This is just a an angle on her. Sure. I swear I'd send some balloons over there to China <laughs> uh, just to see what would happen. I mean, I think that would be, that would be my move. Just to see what they would do. I, Party balloons or? No, here's no, what, really? no, 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 no. Just buy stuff. I, I should, would have. We should send 99 red balloons. <laughs> and you see one of the. Or, or, no, wait, I got an even better idea. We send over, after the Macy's Day Thanksgiving parade, we take those balloons, we send them over to China. Snoopy flies over to right, China. Right, Snoopy over Beijing. That's On a sideline, not on the list, but one of the things that's one of my pet peeves. Sure, go ahead. Is China buying land here in the United States, especially yeah, agricultural land. Well, they buy it outside of military bases, for one thing. Well, yeah. There's a reason for that. They want to have some control over agriculture. And I'm all for them buying, Laura. I am, and here's why. But I think that it should be contingent upon a law that we put into place that enables us to enable our people also to buy acre for acre in China. I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. Think it'll happen? No. If it doesn't happen, Too then reasonable. this. <laughs> yeah, but because the Chinese are not going to let the United States own a, a square inch in China. That's no. not going to happen in a socialistic country like that. Of course that. not. It's not going to happen. So. What I would do with China then is say, look, uh, if you won't do that, then uh, we're taking back over every inch of ground that you've already bought. I, that, that would stop that. Uh, and I think our country would be better off as a result, don't you? Oh, I yeah. agree. And say, look, if you want to say, and, and on the world stage, that would seem fair. I, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. All so, right, so my honorable mention is one that brings me endless levels of happiness, not because of the actual content, but just because watching the reaction, because nobody deserves to take it directly on the nose more than, than Disney. And watching Disney just crank out flop after flop after flop, and then scratch their heads like, I don't know why people aren't watching our movies. I don't know, maybe make it your primary job to entertain us instead of trying to push a political agenda and people go and see your movies. People don't generally like to watch propaganda and don't want to watch, don't want to pay money to watch it. And so whether you're talking about 
Strange World or uh, the new woke girl boss, um, Miss Marvel, which no one liked. Uh, or what's this newest one that just came out? Wish that was another massive box office. Dad, before two years ago, do you know when the last Disney animated feature box office bomb was? I have no idea. It was before I was born. It was The Black Cauldron in, I think, 1986. I have mm-hmm. never heard that. Never it's heard it's that actually one. a good movie, so I don't know Is why it? it bombed, but I like, <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah. But... But regardless, that was the last time Disney had Disney Animation actually had like a dud. Well, in my children's lives, Disney had been the most successful in the history of the pro- of, oh. of that organization. It, it is the most successful American corporation in that time span. There's no question. Yeah, and and it wasn't always like that at all. It was never meant to be this huge corporate conglomerate of this a powerhouse, right? Getting into all these other things. And all these other genres of movies, too, with all the action and all that stuff, they were animated and wildlife stories. Yeah. So it's changed dramatically since then. And, yeah, in your life, uh, starting in the, like, early 90s, all the way up until, like you said, a couple of years ago, uh, just an incredible amount of success. Oh, yeah, they could do that. Like the, the Patriots with Brady. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But then they, like the Patriots without Brady. Yeah, they're, they're not, <laughs> not good. Not, not so sporty, right? That, now. That's a working uh, analogy. Good, yeah. good Lamar. Uh, but yeah, just watching them going woke and just getting the absolute snot kicked out of them from a financial standpoint is something that I really appreciate. And I don't know if they're actually going to learn their lesson because they seem all into the point that they're oh, no. willing to move forward with it, even if they're losing money. They don't care. They are going to lose money. Yeah, I mean, they may. There's only so what? far they can go with that. Right. Eventually, they'll just go out of business. Uh, but but they, they still have a lot to, to burn. Do what? Bob Iger is starting to see the light. He's mm-hmm. starting to admit that that was a mistake. So that whether he turns it around, I don't know. They got but a he's lot. Of, they, like, yeah, we did. They've they, hired a lot of woke people down there. Yeah, I think now that that train has gotten so derailed that even Bob can't turn it around. Mm-hmm. Well, because here's the thing. Um, the people that are running Disney may be ideologically on board, but you got to believe at least some of the stockholders are saying, no, I, I don't care. Like, even if they agree with them, they still don't want to invest their money in them if they're going to lose money. Like, it's just not a smart investment. Yeah. Uh, did you see the South Park episode making fun of all that? Yes. And even though I'm not a S- South Park fan, that was either. comedic that gold. Was amazing. <laughs> Mom, can you see if there's a Disney executive under my bed? <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kitty's a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, so that was it. Let's go ahead and go on to number one. Number one. And number one. All right, and number one on the list. And I was honestly surprised this one made it as high as it did, but, you know, it is a pretty dumb story, so I can, I get it. And it's because all three of us included this one on our list. Asa Hutchinson claiming that trans surgery is a parental rights issue. I believe that God created two genders and that there should not be any confusion on your gender. But if there is confusion, then parents ought to be the one that guides the children. That to me is an important fundamental principle. You might be able to get away with that as a Democrat. You can't do it as a Republican, especially when the place where you say that is a place called the Family Leader, which is the Evangelical Conservative Convention. Like, Know your audience. Yeah, I was about to say, how many of these stories have just been know your audience, understand who you're talking to? And Asa Hutchinson's up there is like, well, you know, if parents want to lop off their kids' genitals, I don't see why the government should get involved with it. Look, I'm about as big a parental rights guy. Like, I've been a fierce advocate for parental rights my entire media career. But you don't get to just lop parts of your children off of their bodies and call that parental rights. That's child abuse. Well, it, it needed the, the top story, as I reflect on it and think about it, really does need to be something related to transsexual. Yeah, had to be. But, and it needed to be something related to sex because in our modern world today, that is the thing that matters the most and is in the news the most and has dominated so much of our world at the workplace, at school, at church, everywhere else. Uh, we've decided now to have 
homosexual and all other kind of sexual preachers, ministers, workers in the church. All right, we've also been it had them involved in school uh, because we have to have the prom and we have to to make sure that we take care of all of that and and make it open and and if you want to be a trans person you can do that or if you want to be a doggone cat you can be that uh any other kind of animal that you want to, it had to be something the number one story had to relate to something sexual and transing into something stranger than the prior generation had been able to accept yeah well Along those lines, Dad, it wasn't even just that he said specifically that it's a parental rights issue. Did you actually see his uh, interview with Tucker Carlson where he said this? No. The whole thing is a train wreck from beginning to end. In fact, they get into a back and forth about it. And Asa's response to this, which, by the way, this ended his campaign. Like, nobody heard anything out of Asa Hutchinson after this interview. Um his response to it was, well, Tucker, I was really hoping we could talk about some real issues. And that's really the problem in the disconnect right there. The older generation of Republicans are so far removed from the general public and where they are on this. They see these little social things as really a non-issue. If you're a parent right now, this is one of the biggest things that should scare the crap out of you. So if you've called it a parental rights issue, and the rest of us are saying, yeah, it's a parental rights issue. We don't want you convincing our kid to chop something off. Or we can't allow our kid to chop something off just because, you know, they feel like it's, they are this. I mean, that we agree it's a parental rights issue. We just don't think it, we should be allowed to do that to our kid. Well, and that's the thing too, Laura. And, and I think that it's so appropriate that you can talk about that. And, and dad, of course, is a parent as well. I'm single. And even I understand the significance of this. I don't have any kids, um, but whether that's true or not, we're in a war against, tr we're, we're in a war of truth versus falsehood. That, that There's no other way to describe it. And so much of the old GOP guard is in this mindset of, well, we just need to talk about the quote unquote real issues, which for them is just things relating to money. Money. Because- it affects your life and it affects my life how much they're taxing us. And that's an issue I feel very passionate about. It affects my life and it affects your life on how much uh, government regulation they have on businesses because it affects the things that we buy and it affects our businesses if we own one. But it's hard to get more personal than trying to brainwash your child into a cult that tells them that they should be uh, mutilating their bodies. Like, I can't think of a thing that gets more personal and more real than that. I mean, I, I agree. It's well, terrifying. Well, this thing, and I'm speaking for you, but these kinds of things make you fearful for him. 100%. I mean, if, I mean it's not going to affect me in the sense that they're not going to convince me to do that. No, but, but... They are for my kids. But that, that child will be influenced by people that have had that done mm -hmm. and will say that it's my choice and it's what I needed to do. And, and he may have a friend that he looks up to somewhere i hope you keep them away from that but, oh, but you yeah. probably will but the point is that makes a mom fearful oh terrified and i get it that's why i'm a finding grandchild, these things in whatever the, else like the uh, library so much mm -hmm. i mean it's because i know i know that books can influence children so much i know these librarians will i know that he's staying out of public school system for that reason i mean yeah these are the things that worry me so much right now as a mom and I mean, is this something you had to worry about for no, your kids? No, I never I mean, thought about it. I mean, no, this is like the issue affecting that. most parents right now. And for Asa Hutchinson to be like, yeah, parents have a right to do that to their kids. Are you serious? I was a, uh, I was a family law attorney before I became a mom. And uh, I, I dealt with child abuse all the time. This is called actual child abuse. John is objecting because <laughs> I did circumcise him. <laughs> he's he's still mad about that. He's still pretty mad, but understandable. Honestly, he'll thank me later. So also true. Yeah, but other than circumcising your kid, I mean, it's yeah. Well, that's well, an actual a, medical procedure that does have benefits. This is something that just I mean, anything that a person could do, like even if you take the mutilation part out of it, which is a big deal. Do indoctrinating your child into this leads to a lifestyle that it ends in suicide 40% of the time. Yes. 40%. And I'm you think that that should just be a parent's choice? Issues. Right. 
like you you there is no way to justify that morally you just can't do it no and it and it uh, again to be redundant but it makes parents fearful and that's more that's a bigger deal than being fearful about your pocketbook oh yeah sure i would trade everything in this world for my child right but and that's as much as you want the economy to be good and for us to live well and have a nice house and all the other things that American dream is supposed to to have, but being fearful about your children trumps that. And so, absolutely. That, and this this story, and I didn't select it first to start with. I didn't either. But in reflecting back on it, it needed to be symbolically something sexual, and the abuse that we're allowing on our children now, and we have grown people that are producing it or are enabling people to do this and fighting for them to be able to do this and then we as a part of all this too girls sports is going by the wayside in many instances uh a girl can't be a girl anymore and then you think about somebody that's a transsexual going into your locker room of your daughter which is a fearful thing and all of this is tied to that well it goes and, back to the discussion i was having about men being passive this is a failure of Asa Hutchinson and not just him, but the people that, that represent that wing of the Republican Party uh, to where they, they just want these social issues to go away so they can talk about the real issues. It's a passiveness of men, kind of what I started out with in my airing of grievances, because this is a person that doesn't care enough about women to protect and they just want to be the nice guy. We've had enough nice guys. We don't need more nice guys. Mitt Romney was a nice guy. John McCain was a nice guy. They failed miserably over oh, yeah. and over again. We and need Trump's somebody not a nice work. guy, and he was successful to right. agree. And yeah. uh, for any of my misgivings about Trump, he was not a nice guy, and no. he actually said what he thought needed to be he said. He did. And, and did was, it, though. That, Look at that. And, that, too. And I, I say that, you know, it's going to take some courage for some people. And, and our look, our country has to be kicked in the stomach a lot of times or beaten over the head to be able to react to something in the right way. And when we see 40% and stories come out with 40% of the young people committing suicide because of this, maybe then it will come home. I don't know. I, I hope so. Maybe. You know, you look through Old Testament history and Israel generally was the same way. They had to be kick, kicked in the face over and over again before they're like, you know, maybe we should actually just listen to God and do what he, he told us to do. And they then, finally quit idols, didn't they? Right they now, finally did, quit that. It did take them fourteen hundred years, but they did decide. You know what? That was stuff did not work out well when we did the idol worshiping. Thing. No, that it just didn't. never ended well for us. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, and unfortunately, I think America is going to have to learn that hard lesson, and we may be in Babylonian exile for a little while. I don't know, but uh, we're going to have to learn that lesson, and it looks like we're bound and determined to learn it the hard way. Unfortunately. All right, so real quickly, we're going to wrap up here with the Stupidest Person of the Year Award. So this is on the person who wound up in the Daily Dose of Stupid the most often this year. Uh, so we'll just go through this one really quickly. Number five, Asa Hutchinson. So no yeah. surprise there. Uh, number four, Jamal, Jamal Bowen uh, wound up in the number four slot. Number three, Gavin Newsom. Number two. Try to higher. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, number two, and this is a surprising one because we it's rare to have a Republican this high on it, but it is Donald Trump. Uh, and let's be honest, Donald Trump has not had a good year. There's he been a lot of dumb things happening. Still being in the race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude needs a drop. He, he did a lot of really good things as president, and he's done some good things this year too, but he's done a lot of, he's had a lot of dumb mistakes this year. Time to go, dude. Time to go. And then finally, for the third year in a row, the president <laughs> of the United States, Joe Biden, is the stupidest person of the year. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> He'd be the stupidest person in the kindergarten room. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I do remember they did a video of him. No, that's a cut down to kindergarten. Speaking to a bunch of first graders, yeah, and I was the kindergarten. <laughs> there, there was video of him earlier this year visiting with like a bunch of first or second graders, and I was like, you know what? He may still be the most unintelligent person. <laughs> Kids five years old. Uh, uh, but anyway, all right. So that's all we had for the uh, Daily Dose of Stupid of the Year award. So thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you, John, for uh, sure. being with us. Um, and well, I was actually talking to baby John, but oh, you were okay. Well, 
little confusing but, here. Thank, yeah, I know. We, we got double Johns here. But uh, Dad and Laura, of course, thank you so much for contributing to this. It's been a great year, and I appreciate you all taking some time out of y'all's busy schedule to help me do this. Great to be Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman. So if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?